Blueberry mead! Let's make it! And the little big mouth bubbler with the siphonless spigot thing from Northern Brewer. We have a fermenter with a hole. See? Gotta put this thing together. Comes with a spigot that has two seals on it. You have to take one off. So the one goes inside, one goes outside. I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. And then screw on the end cap. I'm sure there's neater ways to do this. Otherwise, it won't hold. So you wanna make sure that this is sealed up pretty good. Now, one neat thing about this is this is a 1.4 gallon fermenter. And if you look, that spigot doesn't extend past the bottom. So you can still lay it flat on any surface. That's key. That's very important. Ideally, you want your spigot to end up facing downward. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not going to work the way you want it to. <laughs> yeah. They don't work so well going up. <laughs> All right. So that's done. Now we're ready to go. I do need to know what's open, what's closed. So this is interesting. You would expect that maybe here would be like closed and then any other way would be open. It's not, it actually says off and on. So if you turn it all the way, now it's on and turn it all the way this way, now it's off. Halfway works too, because Derricka was looking through it on the inside to find that and that works too, but I would feel safer putting it all the way to off. There's like almost a little click at the end there that makes me really think that's where the seal might be. So I would do that. The honey we'll be using today is uh, pure American honey from Oregon, sent to us by Jeremy Burke. Thanks, so, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. We have a couple of jars of this. This is just one. Let me um, t show a picture of the label. This one came from Star Farms. The website is starfarms.net. Derek will probably put a link in the description now. I didn't heat the honey. I probably should have. The bottle says three pounds. Well, I don't really trust that it's really three pounds because I just don't trust things like that. So I'm going to weigh it and I'm just going to just dump the whole thing in and whatever it is, it is. But I'm curious, is it really three pounds? Which we'll probably never know because I'm going to have to use hot water to get the rest out. So, you know, this was just kind of something silly to show you guys. <laughs> it's at a little over two and a half right now, though. Or no, it's not quite two and a half. Now becomes the part where we ask just how patient is Brian going to be waiting for the rest of this honey to come out? I'll give you a hint. Not very. I'm not known for being patient with stuff like this. I can leave a brew for a month and not worry about it, but stuff like this drives me nuts. We're at two pounds, eight ounces. So first, I'm gonna say it's a little bit less than three pounds. I hate to say that, but it, it, it seems like it because I don't think there's another half pound in there. It's a quart jar, should be about three pounds. But anyway, just so happens I have a pitcher on the side with some warm water in it. I just filled it about halfway, put the lid on, you see how good these seals are now? Oh, that's good. Okay. And shake the bejesus out of it, which in this case is all the excess honey. Well, I'm not trying to mix it so much as just get it all off. This is warm water. It's like 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And yeah, looks like it's doing, a, doing exactly what I want it to do. But it throws off my weight measurement altogether, so I don't need the scale anymore. Now, just dump this right in. If you're wondering why I'm not being more precise about it, it's because in all honesty, it doesn't make a lot of difference. It, the gravity is going to be what the gravity is going to be. I'm shooting for no more than a 1.100 original gravity. So I know that's going to be about there. Not really a worry. Honey used up. The next thing I want to add is actually our blueberries. So on the side, we have one pound. <laughs> That's her Vanna White impression of frozen blueberries that have been sitting out for a couple hours. So they're semi frozen at this point. The type of berries is these right here. And we just get them at Publix. And it's what I put in my morning green goop breakfasts. And um, they're really, really good. Wild blueberries actually have the best antioxidants. I don't know how well that translates over for fermentation, but that's what I'm using. One pound is the really important thing to know. And I'm just going to get them in there as best I can. Oh, we were supposed to use the bag. I was supposed to use a bag. Oops. They were all supposed to go in the fermenter too. Did some go into your lap? One of them went in my lap. So we may just have eliminated the need for the spigot, but we'll find out. <laughs> all right, so now that that is done, the next thing I wanna add is um, some lemon. Now. There's just some things I like doing. And the reason why I'm adding lemon, I'm just gonna add the zest of the lemon, which is basically just the peel. 
you can just do zest, actual zest. I'm doing some lemon peel because it's just a nice bigger piece, easier to do. I'm probably gonna use the whole lemon's worth of, of peel as well. I'm trying to not get pith. Now, could, you, could I just cut up a lemon and throw it in there? Yeah, my worry there though is it changes the acidity level. Uh, berries tend to be a little tart, which is an acid, and the pH of honey is already in the right range. So I don't wanna mess that up and make it too acidic but I kind of want that extra fresh, sharp flavor from the lemons to get in there. And that's where you use the peel instead of the lemon juice. The peel has most of the essential oils that creates that lemony scent and flavor without the majority of the acidity, which comes in the juice. Exactly. Okay. And as always, what we like to add for a little bit of a tannic property is some tea. In this case, I am using PG tips. It's about two cups of tea, though it could be one. The reason I'm using two is because some of those berries were still a little bit of frozen, but it really doesn't matter how much you put in the tea. I used one tea bag. That's the critical thing. Uh, if you're making more than one gallon, like if you're doing two gallons, three gallons, five gallons, you want to use two bags, three bags, or five bags. Everything just gets scaled up. And I'm just going to pour it right in. To that, I want to fill this uh, with some water so I can start mixing it up. At this point, you wanna check your spigot to make sure it's not leaking, because now would be a bad time for it to start leaking. <laughs> so far, so good. Totally dry. I'm not gonna fill it fully yet, because I have to mix this. For the mixing, I will need my spoon of unusual size. All right, and I'm going to mix this up. Now, I wanna be a little bit careful around that spigot. I don't wanna knock it too much, but I do wanna get all that honey mixed up. Now, one thing that's good is by having the blueberries in there, the mass, I'm gonna mash them up as I do this a little bit, but I'm also using them kind of as extra mixers, kind of like, you know, in a spray paint can, you have that ball bearing, when you shake it up, that clacking sound, it's the same concept. Also, you can use fresh blueberries for this if you want to. The process is much the same, except you probably wanna macerate them, which means to heat them a little bit with some sugar, which is going to change the gravity a little bit, so you might wanna take that into account. Frozen though, the cell walls are broken up, they're good. Someone will always ask, Do, should I throw these in a food processor? Should I blend them up? You totally can if you want to. However, I don't really think you're gonna get much more out of them. You're just gonna make more of a mess. Now, I meant to put these into a brew bag. I'm so used to not using brew bags that I totally forgot and just put the berries right in. That's why Derica said, you know, what about the brew bag? The only thing that would happen with a brew bag is it would make it easier to pull it out later. We wouldn't have to rack it, but we have a spigot. Well, will that spigot work with all the solids in here? Let's find out. So it's a good test. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'm being a little sloppy in my mixing on purpose. I want to get some oxygen into this. In the beginning phases, you definitely want oxygen to be added. All right, it's mixed. As you can see, there's a little bit of foam on top. That's from the aeration. So what I want to do now is add more water. Right about there. The reason we didn't use all of it is because I know I filled that pitcher more than a gallon. So it already had like one and a quarter gallons. We used three pounds of honey. I'm looking for a 1.100 or below gravity. So I know in a one gallon, it would be 1.105-ish. So maybe this will be like 1080 to 1090, which is 1.080 or 1.090. I need to be more consistent in the way I say that. I'm sorry, it's confusing for some people. Um, one last ingredient is going to be a little bit of yeast nutrient. And for that, I have Fermato in a little bit of water, and I'm going to be using the whisk of unusual size, also known as... The wuss. And I'm going to mix it up. In the past, when we tried using this stuff, it always cakes together, and I don't think it ever really worked all that well for that reason. I think it stuck together so well that it actually clouded up some of the brews too. It is an optional step. The main difference will be time. You might need to age it more if you don't use this. All right, so now that this is mixed up, just gonna dump it all in there. Give it another spin with the spoon here. Yes, I know I could get a smaller spoon that actually fits into the frame of the camera, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun. I guess it's not a spoon so much as it's a paddle. Whatever. I will still call it the spoon of unusual size because it's funnier. Now I'm going to take a gravity reading. Gravity readings are important not only to know your ABV, which, you know, is a important but not that critical. It's more to know when it's finished or done because otherwise you are literally guessing. So it's really good to know and see that number to know exactly where your brew is at. 
This is going to have a really cool color. I think as it extracts, it's going to turn that, that purpley blue. 1.080. Not too bad. Pretty much where I guessed. I would have liked 1090 a little bit better, but 1.080 is okay. Some people throw this out or drink it, which is really weird because it's basically just honey water with some blueberry flavoring. I don't know, it smells pretty good. <laughs> it does. This smells so good. If this is an indication of what the final product is going to be like, this is a winner. Anyway, with a 1.080, I do expect this to go dry. And there's a reason. We used to try to aim for a certain gravity above the tolerance of the yeast. Well, here's the thing. Yeast can't read. They don't know what they're supposed to stop at. So five points, 10 points, how do they know the difference? And it was inconsistent across the board. We've learned, we've grown, we've gotten a little bit better at this since then. At least I like to think so. And now I shoot for dry so that I can back sweeten and we just pasteurize them. And pasteurizing is so simple now. I don't even close the bottles anymore. Just put them in the water, get it to 140 degrees and they're done. That's it, it's super easy. Speaking of yeast using Loudon QA23, which is known for its tropical fruity esters. And it goes to, I believe it's a 15% yeast, but I'll correct myself right here if I'm wrong, which is more than we need because with a 1080, this is probably gonna go to like uh, 10 to 11% somewhere in that range, which is perfectly fine by me. I'm using a whole packet. Why? I've been using whole packets for a while and I've had much better, more consistent results using a whole packet than I did when I was using partial packets. So I've kind of changed my rules on that. But one rule I still have, whack your packet. Get every last little yeasty out of there. You paid for them. That's right. <laughs> you, I'm talking to you, get out. You right there. All right, we got them all. Actually, I want to give this a little bit of a swirl. A swirl? Yeah. You can swirl with the lid on, you yeah. know. Yeah, but I wanted to see the yeasties do their thing. Because they're just kind of sitting on top. Anyway, go ahead. We'll put the lid on it. Now, one thing about the Little Big Mouth Bubblers is inside there's a very thin, like, foam seal that... It, there's a lot of threads, so you'd think it'd seal really well. You need to crank it down a lot harder than you might think you should and then you're good. I really like the bung system that they have for these. It They make a bung specific for this, and because it's not going against glass, it's that rubbery material against plastic, it seals beautifully well. So that is one thing I really love. And then a standard airlock fits inside, and you can use a three-piece, you can use the S-type. I prefer the S-type, mostly because it's aesthetics. That's it. The three-piece is easier to clean, the three-piece is just as effective, but I like this one. I just, it, hey, it's just what I like, okay? <laughs> and now, what are we going to do with this? We're going to let it sit. Until it starts fermenting and we'll be back to show you what it looks like. So it's been roughly an hour and as you can tell, we are well on our way into bubblage, which probably means the fermentation has started. The reason why we say that is because this was a warmer beverage solution to start off with and that tends to make yeast really happy. It's not really warm anymore though. Just feeling it. It's like room temperature, which for us is like between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, I know it's December. Sorry, we're in Florida. That's just the way it is. There's a good foam line across the top. Everything about this says this is a healthy startup fermentation. Don't ask me why our stuff starts up in an hour or two. I really don't understand it. No matter what yeast we use, pretty much, they all start up in about an hour or two. However, your mileage may vary. It can take up to three days. Also, if you're using a different yeast, you want to make sure that you look at the packet, find out what the recommended temperature range is, because that can make a huge difference on your yeast. We tend to stick with yeast that work better at slightly higher temperatures. They work really, really well for us. That is a really good point. Please don't take my comment about we started with a warmer beverage, meaning that you should heat yeah, your beverage because do that. that could cause problems depending on what kind of yeast you're using. And how hot you get it. But um, this is going to sit now for a couple of weeks while it ferments out and we'll be back to show you an update on that. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye. There's a hole in the bucket there, Liza. <laughs>